Hey there. Welcome to the Eurostep of Milwaukee Bucks podcast, probably a part of the Blue Wire Podcast Network and GSPN. I am Ty Windish, one of your hosts, joined as always by my illustrious colleague, Rohan Kadi. Rohan, good morning. Happy Tuesday and unhappy Boston Celtics NBA Champions Day. Yeah, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a weird day, you know? I mean... Yeah. It's got to be one of the weirdest seasons or playoffs in, and I almost said NFL history. Wow. NBA history. Um, the Boston Celtics obviously have won the NBA title. They won in five games. Uh, they lost game four uh, really bad uh, on the road against the Mavs just to come back and dominate at home and win at home. And you know what? It just sucks, doesn't it? It yeah. just sucks. I mean, this finals had no, I don't like to use like just buzzwords from the internet, but this, I feel like this one is actually apt. This had, this finals had no aura whatsoever. Like there was no, no. like, there was no mystique. There was no like grandeur about these finals, right? Like it just felt like a normal ESPN uh, Wednesday night game. There was nothing, nothing surprising happened aside from maybe game four. And it just, it just felt like a boring finals. It it truly did. I mean, the East playoffs were a joke to begin with. The West playoffs at least were fun. I'd say like probably the best two series from the entire playoffs altogether came uh, from the Western Conference. Like I don't I don't think that's even close to a debate. But yeah, the Eastern Conference, man, it was just so tough. Every every series without the Knicks was horrible. Absolutely. Absolutely. They were the only ones keeping the entertainment value in the playoffs in the eastern in the eastern side. The West playoffs were good. Yeah, I think like game two and three were like kind of close. I forget which one was closer. They they had they both were ended up being seven point margins. But I, yeah, I mean there was no classic game. I mean game four, I really thought Boston might come back before halftime, but they just clearly were like, yeah, whatever, we'll do it in five and. You know, to the Boston's lack of credit, or to, excuse me, to uh, Dallas's lack of credit, they did not take advantage of that mindset at all. I mean, they were horrible in four of the five games, and congrats for not getting swept. But I feel the same way I felt about the Wolves. Why was your goal to not get swept? Your goal should exactly. be in the series. Like, the Wolves did it against Dallas. Like you oh, yeah. should, if and you're Dallas, you should know what kind of a loser mindset that is. Also, Jason Kidd still sucks. That's oh, what absolutely. I learned for the finals. I mean. Maxi Kleber got rotation run in all five games. Rohan, he cannot move his arms. It turns out that makes it difficult. And on the broadcast, JJ and Doris are like, oh, he's playing as good of defense as you can play on Jason Tatum. No, he's not. Jason Tatum's getting to the rim. He, he's sticking with him okay. Tatum's at least it wasn't, at least it wasn't Dwight Powell. Sure. I mean, I, I think I would take a guy with two shoulders. I mean, they're just letting him shoot every time. Dallas scored under 100 in four of the five games. Kyrie super overrated. Not a t- would not be a top three player on the Milwaukee Bucks. I'll tell you that much. Oh no, not even close. I mean, hey, do I, we still have to overlook all the dumb stuff he said? Now that he's not playing well anymore, how does that work? Is that a sliding scale or is it is it done? It's, it's done now. I think it might be. I think it might be done now. You don't really have to okay. worry about it anymore. I so also you, you don't get, think you get redemption once and then you're just good. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> At least I've been wondering. I've been yeah. wondering because I was told, yeah, he's playing good now, so it doesn't matter. But now he's not, so I don't know. If I guess he has to do more dumb stuff for it to matter. It's obviously a joke on my head. Uh, yeah. but his his tweet after the game was I, I would have thrown my phone if I was a man. Tribe, it's okay. It's not a big deal. Kind of is a big deal, man. Kind yeah. of, kind of a big deal. It's the finals. It's a little you, bit of a big if deal. You're, if you're Dallas, what are you sure you're getting back there in this era? No, of course not. No, I don't think Boston even should be. I think they should feel better about it than most, but definitely I think Boston, not for Dallas. I, definitely Boston. I mean, every single one of their rotation players is under contract for next season. No, but. I know. I, it, but it's just, I mean, it, you know, Denver is like, oh, they're just losing, you know, Bruce Brown. Not really a big deal. And then you lose in the second round. I'm just saying, you know, not, not, not team building wise, just you can feel great about it and then not even make the conference finals. Oh, absolutely. And Bucks, it's, I mean, the Bucks. That's yeah, she sets the Bucks the last three years. Yeah. Uh, but it's just, it, it just sucks, man. It just sucks. Yeah. Like, we, we've talked at length about how we do not, like, we're fine with Jason Tatum. Like, he's, he's yeah. like a pretty likable guy. The, I, the, I, I liked him less than ever yesterday when he was trying yeah. to do all the Kobe stuff. It was so corny. The, yeah. He tried to emulate the KG, anything is possible. Yeah. 
And it's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? I feel like his whole career is, I mean, he's always had the Kobe stuff, but like, like his personality, his own personality has shown through. Like he is just the boring dad who does Taco Tuesday. Which and is hoop, fine. Which is great. And the other nice moments with Deuce and everything. But yeah, it was it, like some of the emulation stuff I thought was very corny. Like just, just be a boring dad. There's nothing wrong with that. Like, I like the I like the Jalen swore a bunch and like the whole speech was bleeped <laughs> on TV. I thought that was awesome. Yeah. Uh, I mean, maybe Jason Kidd doesn't suck in the sense that he got it. He got their best player, right? Yeah, that's true. Yeah, Jalen Brown. Then you look, finals at, you look MVP. at the counting stats, and it's like, oh, Tatum was just better at all three of the ones that people track the most. But Jalen's defensive assignment on Luca was huge. Yeah. Plus, uh, if we're if Bucks fans are leaving here with something in the fact that Chris Middleton still has higher uh, Finals averages than uh, Finals MVP Jalen Brown. Yeah. Um, I, I really, I, Nikai said he would have voted for Drew. I thought that was a bit much. I think it's a bit much, too. And we, we talked about the Drew stuff last week, if you want to hear our full thoughts on that. I'm happy for him. I noted this last night. Probably a Hall of Famer now, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Did you did you catch the one moment for the ESPN broadcast when they were doing their, like, commercial-free crunch time? And they were just, yeah. like, talking about Drew. And they're like, they panned to the crowd, and it's like, oh, and there's Random his wife. Yeah. There's his wife, Lauren Holiday. And then, like, two minutes later, Mike Prince, like, we have to apologize. Oh, uh, we did not. not his wife. <laughs> that was not Drew's wife. <laughs> Like, what do you do? That's a bad one to miss, too. Because I feel they, like Lauren Holiday has been a pretty prominent person. Like, yeah, well, it's, it's her like... Her story, her athletic career. Like, come on, man. When they panned, I was like, bro, that's not Lauren. <laughs> Shout out to the Holidays, man. That no is. one deserves it yeah. more than them. I, I think I saw Justin and Aaron were there. I'm pretty sure they showed them oh, when Drew they? was oh. talking on the podium. I think so. Yeah. But yeah, happy for Drew. I think he's a Hall of Famer now. He could, he could add... A second ring and a second gold medal, I believe, this summer, which would really, I mean, that's a big help for the, you know, basketball Hall of Fame. Tip. So basically in three years, the Bucks need to trade for Drew again. Because it seems yeah, like it's just, on a four-year yeah. cycle. It's or no, an, it's a, an Olympic cadence, four yeah, years. It's an Olympic cycle. But the thing is, the Olympics uh, took place in 2021, so there's only been a well, yeah. three-year gap. Yeah, but I mean, you, you can't, unless they speed them up for some reason. Which I don't want to know what kind of catastrophe is having to move the Olympics up instead of back. <laughs> no, but uh, what I'm saying is, is it the gap? No, I is know, it a but he can't win gap? a gold. But he can't win a I – mean, if they have, both have to happen in the same summer. They do, yeah. I, I think I think that's – I don't think it's every year he'll win a ring. I think it's every time every, – every X years, I think it's every time he can do both. Gotcha. So keep him on the Olympic okay. team. That's my thought. And you can't, you can't trade for him before that. It has to be the season in which you trade for him. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm, like there's no shot he's on the Olympic team in four years, right? No, because he, he'll be 38 at that point. Yeah, because he's 34 now. No, I he's believe. not. No, I thought he's like a. He's roughly the same age as Dame. Dame is not that old, is he? He's a, he's a year older than Dame. I know that. He's 34. Oh wow. He's a fresh 34. Last week, June 12th. So unless he does some LeBron stuff. Yeah, or some Al LeBron, Horford LeBron stuff. Dame, and Bam. Dame's bringing LeBron and Bam to uh, to the Bucks. Did you see this? Yeah, they were all hanging out at the Aces game. Aces Liberty, Liberty look really good. By oh, the way, oh they do. They look. They look good. I'll tell stuff. you, I get KD Warriors vibes from them. Except like John Quell Jones is like if you flip Draymond from offense to defense or defense I know, to it's, offense. It's crazy. Their team is stupid loaded. I'm trying to. I'm trying to go for when they're in town uh, against the Sky. You should. Uh, have you caught a Fever Sky game? Yes. So you, you, you get the, the full MMA experience? They hate <laughs> Caitlin Clark, dog. They really hate her. I oh, think it's good for the sport. I, I think, think it's Caitlin just basketball. The right way. It's not just basketball. It's just a certain brand of basketball. Yeah. But like, are you talking about the Angel Reese foul? I mean, that yeah, that one was the least. I was like, that's just basketball. What are we doing here? That, that thing was on CNN, dog. Well, that yeah, play. obviously, obviously the, the whole hot furor about it is stupid. I mean, do I think Angel Reese is inclined to let Kayla know she's there in the paint? For sure. 100%. I'm not yeah, saying it's anyone, a national outrage or whatever. Like, Has anyone watched basketball before? 
Like, I, yes, I, 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 I don't think that's just run of the mill basketball. I think it's a no, certain I'm even kind saying of like, we don't like you basketball, I'm which even is saying, which is it, fine. Like even the, like in the NBA, they treat all rookies like this. Like, what are we doing? I think it's a little different, but not in a bad way. Yeah, it's just. I think they're sick of hearing about it. I would be too. Yeah, it's being it's weaponized for talking points that it shouldn't be. Yeah, hundred percent. I just uh, I'm ignoring. I'm I'm talking about when I sit here and I watch the game, and I'm not sharing it. I'm just watching it myself. I'm like, oh yeah, they hate her. This is awesome. Then she goes and hits a three, and it's sick. Like that's one of the best things about sports is when a team clearly hates someone and they just beat them anyway. I think Mm -hmm. it's awesome. So I'm a big fan. Yeah. If you want, if if you're wondering if this has ever happened before in sports, though, just yes. ask uh, ask the Cavs, uh, 2003 Cavs, what they thought about their new draft pick. Well, yeah, it's it's yeah, the whole thing is stupid. I, yeah. I you know, shockingly, Colin Cowherd nailed it. And I, what do you say? He was like, like it's not it's not too tough for like it's basically that like the men watching think that it's too rough. But the women actually playing are like, yeah, this is just basketball. Like, it's not too rough for them. It's like all these re- – the Chicago Tribune was like, that's assault. Like, shut up, dude. Watch boxing once. Like, yeah, sports get a little aggressive sometimes. Watch football. Is, you watch that, the, is that assault? Do you watch the Tank Davis fight? No. Not a boxing guy? No. no. I'll, I'll start watching him if Dame comes on the pod. Dame, come on the pod. Do it. And yeah. – and, Bring a Breitling, or is that Giannis? That's Giannis. Yeah, no, Dane, bring your Tiso. They bring a T. Oh, we can have a. They, we can have them both on, and we can compare the watches. Ty, don't don't get don't like. That's 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 the dream right there. I know. We can maybe talk basketball too. Yeah, I guess a little bit. Speaking um, of basketball, yeah. So before we get, so the main thing of our pod is we're going to share our buck specific, right? Yours is buck specific. I think we yep. look at everything through a buck lens. Uh, 2024 draft big boards, and, and we'll walk through the exact process for which players we can include. And I, I cheated once; it was 20. I added one I shouldn't have been able to add, but yeah, you know, it's my list. Like I, I, I don't care. Sue me. But first, uh, an NBA rule was changed in the last CBA. Technically, part of free agency is open right now. You can negotiate with your own players. You cannot officially sign anything yet, or even announce anything yet, but. That doesn't mean we won't hear about anything ahead of the rest of free agency because, you know, when free agency quote unquote opens, which is like late June, very late June. Yeah. The, the, was it the tampering window? That's like, they moved yeah. it up a little. It used to it's, be it's June 30th at like five Eastern. Or yeah. Something. Like you, they can't announce deals then either. Like that's just when they can start negotiating, which is what this is for your own free agency. That's but the, the traditional the start it. of free agency. Whenever you think of free agency, you think, oh, July yes. 1st or now it's June 30th the afternoon. Yep. That's now extended to now, today, the day after the finals for your own free agents. That's it. Or you cannot... players you can extend. Yeah. But only Play... your own players, basically. Yes. Players who, yeah, your own free agents or people who are going to be your under contract who are extension eligible July 6th for yes. your own team. That's it. You cannot talk to any other free agents like outside uh, free wink, agents. Wink, wink, nod, nod. Yeah. It's not like it's already happening. But yeah. now we can start to see deals announced for, uh, for example, the Clippers. Announced by Woj. Yes. Not Re- uh, by reported, the Clippers. Report. Yes. Report. We Just can see the Clippers. We could see the Clippers announce a new deal with Paul George today. We could see that. We couldn't see the 76ers do it, but we can see the Clippers do it. Is that a good example? Yeah, yeah that's a good example. Uh, so for the Bucks' perspective, I mean, for the NBA perspective, I, mean, that could, I, I would be shocked if that happened before Paul George could legally talk to the Sixers and other teams. But Also, can we like, take uh, a second to say what, uh, what, what is Joel Embiid doing? Oh. Uh, the fact that Drew Holiday and Al Horford and Jason Tatum and Jalen Brown all either were or could have been Sixers makes it so much funnier. It does. Makes it, it really so so much funnier. But what I'm referring to is is I think it was Game Four, right? Yeah. He was on the desk that ESPN desk, which just keeps getting no. The desk doesn't get bigger, but they keep putting more people behind it, and I think it's the it's it's funny but also sad. Uh, people were hating on Randall last night. I was like, good for Julius. He's having a good time. He's calling himself mini Tibbs. 
He's not pushing an agenda. I was happy with Randall. Yeah. But go I, on. Have you also noticed uh, it was pointed out that all of the players who have been at the desk are CAA clients? Of course they are. Yeah. Uh, I just think it's very funny. Of course. But Joel Embiid made an unannounced. Like ESPN did not know he was going to be there. Oh, yeah. The, I, I thought you were talking four. about the, the No, no, the I don't even care. Thing. We're not doing it's about stupid. that. We're not doing yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he made an unannounced visit. He was like, hey, can I just come on the show? I'm here. And they were like, uh, uh, okay, <laughs> at game four. Purely to, to flirt just with Paul sign- George. Yeah, on national TV. Like, what are you doing? Like, have some shade, man. Like, like, I mean, I like Paul George. He's a very good podcaster. I like Paul George, too. He's a very good podcaster. This is, like, kind of sad. We're like post prime, no longer an all star. Paul George is who we're talking about here. It's it's like, like what can do you, we just rein it in? Like Joel, like this is going on during the finals, in which you have not even sniffed you don't the know round about before that. that, and you're out here on national TV just trying to side eye free agents. I'm sure ESPN loved it because they're just like, oh my god, great entertainment. Oh, I take value. it back. Paul George was an all star this year. I was gonna say, I was like, I'm pretty sure he was an all star, but I didn't want to risk being wrong. But yeah, it was it was just like, come on, come on. But that deal cannot be announced or reported until like June 30th, if it were to happen. Unless unless the Clippers get him. Yes. Which yeah, I would be pretty shocked. It would be very funny though to watch the uh, Sixers totally panic. Pivot to their... Demar Derozan. Yeah. I mean, they're going to try to get LeBron. He's just going to go around and flirt with everyone and then resign because Savannah and the James gang don't want to leave L.A. And I don't blame them. They got a pretty good thing going. Not in terms of basketball, but like... No. <laughs> just in general. Definitely not in terms of basketball. But hey, when you can call up everyone and say Austin Reeves for All-NBA Player X and they say no and you go, we tried, LeBron. Let's sell some tickets, baby. But the Bucks side of things not very exciting here um i mean the impending free agents i think there's probably only two i guess there's three technically worth talking about one of course is thanasis where you know it's if we don't get news in the next couple weeks he could still be back right like you know there's going to be open roster spots probably up until the first day of the regular season if not beyond then for tax purposes and just because there's usually only so many players you want on the team I mean, we know it's pretty much up to Thanasis. Unless Doc comes in and puts his foot down, but I, somehow I doubt He's that. He's like, we have to have you back, Thanasis. Maybe. Um, so maybe we hear about that. Maybe we don't. But, like, you know, he's rehabbing right now. He could be really thinking about this decision. He's posting a lot in the IG group he runs. So I'm getting a lot of messages from him and his downtime, which is nice. Sharing a lot of memes. Um, but who knows? But that's obviously one uh, impending free agent. I think the most probably interesting to talk about maybe is Pat Bev. And we've heard kind of mixed signals from reporters on if they think he'll be back or not with the Bucks. I will ask you, since today is the day, Rohan, nerf gun to your chest. I don't want to be as dramatic. Just hurt a little bit. Would, do you think Patrick Beverly is going to sign, re-sign with the Milwaukee Bucks? No, I do not. I do not. I think... Actually, I'm like, I'm like 55, 45. Actually, yes. Just, he is a Doc guy. Yeah. Even though Doc was disgusted with his antics. I think he, out of the free agents that the Bucks have, I think he is the most likely to come back. However, More than TA? Are you counting TA? No, I'm not counting TA. Okay. Uh, I think he is the most likely to come back out the of real free agents. Let's, let's, let's be respectful. Yeah, like, I, didn't, I didn't say if it meant. Uh, there could be several contexts there. Let's let's be respectful. But Didn't say real NBA players said real. Uh, go on. <laughs> what I didn't say that. I know. Um, Do you think other teams are calling? Yeah. Who the Knicks again? Yeah, the Knicks again. I hope we get that report again. I think it's great every time they're like Tanas has turned out offers from X X and X to. Uh, but out of out of the other free agents, I think he is the most likely to return, uh, purely because he provided the most value late in the season and the postseason yeah. as well. And we have to remember, even though the postseason wasn't the best for Pat Bev, he was doing it on like a broken wrist. Uh, 
So there's that's also like a mitigating factor. But we saw as soon as he joined the team, the energy shifted, the energy changed. They needed a guy like that. They needed someone to really do that. However, we don't really know if that was last season specific or just an, an overall need for the Bucks because last season was just such a mess overall. Yeah. We we don't know if they need another galvanizing force because they desperately needed one last season. But who knows if they need one after just like a whole summer and just all of this. Who, who knows? But yeah, I, I said no purely because there's probably going to be other point guard options, like backup point guard options. Like, who knows? Maybe maybe Andre Jackson Jr. takes more of that role. Maybe um, uh, Ty Ty Washington fights for a spot. That's, that's the third guy I meant in terms of interesting. He is technically a, a Bucks own free agent they could negotiate with. So that is the other one where it's like maybe – Maybe we see something come through early. I'm not really sure if we hear anything though. Like, I, do you do you do you agree? It's almost most likely we probably don't hear much about the Bucks until real free agency. Like, no offense to any of them, these just aren't the kind of players you're usually doing first, right? I mean, you don't have to sign them first. I mean, if if they're vet mint, it doesn't really matter. But I I just don't know if these are like the Bucks are going to be rushing to get tied tied on a deal right now. Maybe they are. Maybe they just want to get it done. Maybe they agree to a longer, like, A.J. Green non-guaranteed deal. Thanasis, of course, could be a one-year mid at any point. And then Pat Bev, I, I don't, he might want to test his market. I mean, Pat Bev has said, like... He said that know, himself. Yeah, I, 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 I like to get the bag. And you know what? If you can find it good for you, the Bucks are very limited on what they can pay him. With non-bird rights, it would be, I mean, extremely small. Because he signed, he just signed. He doesn't even have early bird. He has non-bird. So, yeah, it's... They could basically give him another vet man. So he may want to wait on that side. So I think Ty Ty and TA are the two most likely that we'd hear in this early period. For sure. For sure. Other and players are uh, Malik Beasley, who again, like, why would he do that now? Especially like that's a player who should be like trying to get MLE or at least mini MLE somewhere. And Jay Crowder, please God, no. Boss man, we've seen, we've seen enough. Boss man. We don't know your purpose either. Oh man, such a, a funny moment. Maybe only funny to me when like Ajax and Marjan were in Greece. The next story up on my my Instagram was Jay Crowder, Boss Man Nine Nine, and I was like, no, I don't know why. In my head, I was like, is he in Greece too? Is everyone posting? And it was just like some merch that some one of his friends is. I was like, thank God. Could you imagine just Boss Man in, in Athens? I'm here too. I can, you know what? I'd respect it. I would respect it. I would be, I would detest it. Here's, here's a fun little thing. I was trying to find a tweet of mine the other day. So I was searching things up. And one thing I found was a pod, uh, that we, we had done two years ago at the trade deadline or before oh, the trade deadline. And yeah. it was like, it, you, you were saying like, what was it? Oh yeah. Uh, going into this pod, I was sure fire that I wanted the bucks to trade for Jordan Clarkson. But then after talking to Perron about it, I was like, man, I think I'm Team Jay Crowder. I'm like, no. Yeah. It's like that meme, the Interstellar meme, where no, you're just like looking no. through the note. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, man. Tough. I don't want either of them now. Yeah. Any other thoughts on, I mean, probably not Boss Man, but any of the other Bucks free agents? Do, I mean, do the you, Bucks who don't do really. Think, who do you think is, do you think Ty Ty would be brought back? I think I think the Bucks would love to keep Ty Ty. Under wraps. I, I mean, in the organization, under wraps. I don't know what I'm saying, but they want to hide him. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but really, they do. They don't really want him to to go out. At least I would hope so. Well, I, I wonder though. Do you if wait until post? To. Do, well, do you or do you wait until post draft? Maybe. As we'll talk about, there's a couple pretty intriguing backup point guards in that range. That I, I mean, I mean, you could do like a non guaranteed. I don't know if he would really want that, but he was on a two way this last year, right? So the the leverage is not great for him, although he had a very nice season in the G League. Absolutely. And uh, we also know the Bucks would be willing to uh, part ways with someone that they know has interest from an actual NBA team if they don't want to promote him to the roster, as Mamu. they did with Mamu. Yeah, so if the, if the Bucks are not interested in uh, giving or, or have the capacity to give Tai Tai a full roster spot and another team wants to, I'm pretty sure the Bucks would do well by him and then do that. I would guess they may want to wait until like post camp. So I wonder if they would just get key, like bring him back on a two way for now that he could get like they have the I forget is is that exhibit ten maybe? Yeah, there's a contract you could do an exhibit where it's 10. like 
well, you could you could promote him to an NBA spot if he wins that job through like camp and summer league. You know, there's options like that. So I, if, if he gets just a full roster spot, then I think you could say, you know, they're probably not going to draft a point guard and they probably feel really good about him next season. So I think the thing it'll I would I would be pretty surprised. I'll put it this way. If he and Pat Bev got contracts announced like in free agency by the Bucks, For sure. hundred percent. And also the Bucks don't really have anyone extension eligible either. So I was like his Brook. Brook might be, but. If that God, happens, that'd be funny. That'd be, I think, we're no, all ready to trade him, Brook Lopez. It would not be tack funny. on, tack on two more years, baby. It would not be funny, Ty. I might, I might just throw. I, I don't know what I'd do. What if they, what if they just did the Horford? Here's another eight million year. You're not expiring anymore. I think that would take away from some of his value. Well, uh, clearly they're not trading him if they're extending him. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'd oh, be yeah. upset. I don't know. I'd be upset if they gave Brook an extension right now. It is technically possible. I don't think any – Chris has too many years. Giannis should still have too many. I think Dame still has too many. Let me look at their multi-year. Without having the rules in front of me, I mean, there's like a whole – it's like a different thing if, uh, you know, like Giannis, I think you can extend earlier, but he's still got three years Oh, remaining. wait. There are, there are two bucks who are extension eligible this season. Oh, do you, where where'd you find this? Spotrack. Oh, Chris. Is Chris? No. No. Brooke it, and no. Marjan? It's Bobby and Pat. How would Brooke not be? He's expiring. He must I, be. I don't know. But it says this extension. Is on track? Yeah, it says extension eligible right next to Pat and Bobby. Weird. Yeah. Could be wrong. I would imagine Brooke is, but maybe because it was only a two year deal. I, I have heard. Yeah, but it, I, I thought because he had signed concurrently with the same team but maybe you're right because it is a two-year deal um i i did read somewhere maybe in a bobby marks thing that like will they extend bobby portis and and it makes a lot of sense for him to be looking for that for sure i mean the contract he signed was and i would say probably still is under market value i mean it's like for sure less less than 10 percent of the cap this year less than nine percent of the cap this season which is very very small um but yeah i uh i would rather see a trade there too no. Pat Conson, you don't want to give him that full max extension? What if they gave him a full min extension? A full min extension? You know what? I might take three, that. Three years, three bet minutes. He might do it. He loves Milwaukee. He's got he's got new uh, developments going on here, so you know. I him wonder. And, him and Peter got to stay, stay doing it. I don't think they could extend and trade him. So the interest there is you can decline your option and extend and trade and then redo the year. So they could actually make him more palatable. To, I guess he could just decline his option straight up, but he shouldn't do that. Whatever. Anyway, uh, we don't think there's going to be any extensions. There could be. There could be with Bobby. That'd be very intriguing. I'd, I'd be disgusted. Um, but we don't think there's going to be any extensions uh, and maybe a signing. But again, it's not going to be. It's not going to be a groundbreaking move for the Bucks if they announce no, signing. They don't own have agents. any. They just they don't have any free. They did all here. the hard work last year. Exactly. They got they got Dame. They re-signed Chris and Brooke. And again, they'll have to tackle the Brooke thing again after this year. But and, they would have to and tackle Giannis it signed way. the extension. And Giannis, yes. <laughs> I was like, that's the most important one. <laughs> yeah, four. I, I misspoke. By the way, I, the, they show the first year difference. So there's four more years, including next year on Giannis. Although one's a player option, three guaranteed. Yeah, which is awesome. I love that. Yeah, through Giannis's early to mid thirties. Yep, he turns thirty this year, which is crazy. Yeah, don't want to talk about that anymore. Don't want to talk about that anymore. Speaking of, let's talk about our big boys. Yeah, speaking of age, let's talk about some people way younger than us. That sounds weird. I don't think all of them are. How old are you right now? Twenty four. Oh, just barely. Yeah. I've I'll got be 20, two twenty five next month. Oh man! Oh, I know. So you, okay, so you have yeah. You, now you're more than a year out from even the old guys in the draft. I know. How do you feel? Don't remind me. You're only four years younger than Brandon Whedon when the Browns drafted him. Is that true? <laughs> yeah, he's twenty not twenty eight or twenty nine. <laughs> that can't be true. Pull it up. That's ridiculous. How does that even happen? Dude, the Cleveland Browns. They drafted Johnny Manziel because a homeless guy told the owner to. What? Yeah, oh my. You have so much Browns lore to learn. I don't think I need to. I think you've got the gist of it now. That's insane. 
Can you confirm the Brandon Whedon draft age? Yeah, he was 28. He was the oldest player ever taken in the first round. What are you doing? I mean, just imagine taking a 28. Like, yeah, I wonder if he had any advantage over his 19-year-old peers in college. Yeah, why? Why was he? Why was he? If you're 20- not a good, if you're not a good college quarterback at 28, you're the biggest bum of all time. You've had a decade to study the film, my guy. Why was he a in decade. college? Like, why was he playing college football know. at that age? I don't age? know. I don't know. I don't know, man. Like you, we can't. We can't. We have. We have. We have a lot of players. Yeah, we about. do have a lot of stuff. Um, so I, I have one through 21 ranked. I will not lie. The bottom of my list is pretty squishy. I'd started throwing guys down who I either don't think are fits or I don't like very much. And I'll probably reorganize it a little bit. I'd say my top 10 is probably the tightest ranked right now. It may be out to like 13, 14, 15. I find those guys intriguing. So I think, should we trade off some of our like kind of go one one player each on our list and talk yeah. about them a little bit, I'll and then go. we can talk about maybe some maybe some big name players who we rank differently for whatever reason. Yeah, I'll go one because it's no surprise here. Like no, th- there's no shock in the world whatsoever. Yeah. It's Kello Ware. He's three on my list right now. Yeah, I mean, I, we've talked about him before a lot. Uh, just a, a a near seven footer with a plus five wingspan can yeah. shoot the heck out of the ball. Uh, can I hope he can. Theoretically, can shoot the heck out of the ball. You go on, then I'll I'll chime in. So good I, I pulled some low advanced volume. shooting data. Yes, good percentage, very very low volume, but it is capable and it projects to be a decent shooter. He's going to have a higher shot volume of threes in the NBA than he would in college, purely because he's going to be you know playing if he, if he is drafted by the Bucks, like playing with guys like Giannis, Dame, Chris, uh, who would just command space and. Just a guy, a switchable defender, can d- go defend out in space, hard rim roller, athletic, go up there, vertical space, and catch your lobs. He is the guy that I, like, he 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 embodies the, like, truly embodies the type of player that I want on the Milwaukee Bucks so much. Like, he, he is yeah. a floor spacing big. Like, can be a floor spacing big. I know that's a question. Can be a floor spacing big, switchable defender, athletic, vertical spacing, good hands. That's that's perfect for me. So I, I said what I said about the shooting because he took 40 total threes in 30 games, which is a very small sample. He was only a 63.4% foul shooter last year, which is not good. No. And there is like a – I don't want to say trope. There's like a belief in the basketball scouting community that – Free throw percentage is damn near more applicable to next level shooting from three than three point percentage, especially on a smaller sample like this. And what is he going to do hey. with no Josh Oppenheimer on the staff anymore? That's a good. That's a great point. Oh, also, something we forgot to mention: the Bucks got a new assistant coach. Um, oh yeah, free Jason Love. Oh Love, yeah. I confused my from the my, from my the Sixers now. old old Doc guy. Doc's like, oh, we, we got too many coaches, and he hires five more coaches. I think he's now hired more than he's gotten rid of. Can you oh, he has. He's brought in four? Yeah. Between midseason and now after that. And he's still trying to get Cassell, they said. I, I don't think that's accurate. No, they, especially with, with Van Gundy leaving for the Clippers. I would imagine that Boston will keep him. But the report no, came out and, again after. And the, But the report was saying to be his lead assistant. And it's like, why would they do that when they just Darvin, got Darvin to be their lead assistant? Darvin is lead vibes. Kaleiman is lead defense. Jaeger is lead offense. Prunty is lead inbounding plays. And then Cassell is lead big balls. I don't know. I was going to say big balls. Yeah. So that's always what I think of with them. Um, but with Kelly Aware, I don't put much stock in this, to be clear. Uh, but he was in the worst groups among all the prospects on my list in the combine corner three and combine off dribble shooting percentages as well. But it was like 44 and 36% respectively. It's not horrible. Okay. Poor Ryan Dunn was the oh worst on both, God, I think. Yeah. I just I dropped him so far down. It was, was like he I wasn't just, high for me to begin with. He's just but. never gonna play offense, dude. His he shot twenty percent from three on an one attempt per game and a list low fifty three point two percent from the foul line. This tells me he is never going to shoot. I, I, I don't think he will ever shoot, and I just don't think there's value there for the Bucks at least. No, absolutely not. And uh 
doubles advocate for the for the shooting numbers for Kello where at the combine those are two shots that he's not really going to take as a member yeah, of the above, Bucks. above break would be the best they didn't they, they don't test as many as you'd like them to yeah if overall. Kello Ware is taking off the dribble threes for the Bucks, something's gone wrong yeah and his corner or number something's was, gone was okay very but right. great. yeah yeah maybe I like him too. Like I say, he's still three on my board. I, I, the size and the skill set is still tantalizing. And Only I think 20 there's years a ton old. Of potential. Yes. Yep. A fresh 20. Yeah. Uh, six, almost seven feet tall right now. Could grow to be a true seven footer, but he's a quarter inch away. And seven, four and a half wingspan, as you mentioned. So there's a lot There's a lot to like. I like Kelo Ware a lot. I'd be very happy if that was their pick. Yeah. Unfortunately, it looks like he's rising. I don't know. Everyone's rising. Everyone's falling. I have no idea where anyone's okay. going to go in this draft. Let's, I, I'm very excited for number one on your board and for you to talk about why. I'm worried I won't be able to pronounce it right. I knew I forgot to look up one thing and it was this. I'm going to go Keyshawn George. It might be Kaishan George. It's a good question. But the, the Florida wing, as I look through more players, right now, three of my top four, so I already gave the fourth is where. Three of my top four are big wings. I think the big wings in this class are actually pretty intriguing. I think there's some good options who are being slept on. And George is the one who stood out to me the most. He is, I believe, was born in Switzerland, grew up a point guard, and then shot up in height. Wasn't on the ball very much at Miami, but still has a handle. Six foot seven with a more than 6'10 wingspan. I think is a real shooter. Like he gets it off fast, has made some big shots and big games for them. For nearly 41% from three on 130 total attempts. That's more than four per game, which um, Baylor Shireman took more than eight. Cam Christie took more than five. Otherwise, nobody else will talk about took more than four, like took five or more per game. So pretty high volume overall. 77.8 from free throw is pretty good. Nailed the combine shooting. He's 20 and a half years old. I, and every time I read a scouting report of him, it's like needs to fill out more. You know, wasn't used that much in college. To me, those are like the least red flags. Like, yeah, all these guys need to fill out more unless they're 23 years old, right? Like Tristan De Silva maybe doesn't. Everyone else does. Like that's normal and wasn't used more. Like that's not his fault necessarily. Maybe it is, but Devin Booker wasn't used very much. I'm not comparing Kashan George or Keyshawn George to Devin Booker, but I'm just I saying. Think, I right? think it's like, Keyshawn, by the way. I think it's Keyshawn, yeah. Um, I'm not comparing him to Devin Booker, but I I look at him and I see like this guy could be a transformative big wing. And I think in a way that like, you know, my concern with all these guys is are there too many wings already on the Bucks? He's bigger than most of the ones they have right now. And I think the shooting is farther along than any of the young. I mean, obviously AJ Green, but like the other young players on the team, uh, I think his shooting is really real. And I think he would look awesome next to Giannis. And I like that, you know, I don't mind going with an older player whatsoever. We'll talk about some that we like, but I like that there's potential that he could really grow in a big way in this role on this team. No, a hundred percent. I think, I think he's not as high on my board, but like, it's just what pops out to you is just, it, it, it pops, right? Yeah. Like I, I see your vision. I see your vision so much. Like, I, like I'm not going to add A big wing anything. who can already shoot and has a, like a real handle and can pass. Like, for what sure. More? And, and can defend like he's long. He's got blocks. He has disruptive on the defensive end with that wingspan. Like I'm really surprised I'm seeing him in like the 20s and 30s on a lot of big boards. Because I'm like, this is the player every team wants. And I really, when I went through and did this, I became like a size queen. Six or five of my top six, I believe, are at least this guy's height, six, seven and above with a plus wingspan. So it's like, that's what works in the NBA, man. That's... That, what have we it's, talked about? All playoffs. It's, it's tall like, ball. That's, it's yeah, tall, tall skill ball, ball is everything. So if we can, if you the Bucks can get a real big wing, I'm all about it. So that's why I have him two or him one. And I cheated and put Tristan De Silva two. We don't have to talk a bunch about him. He's two for oh, me. So he technically wasn't legal in our exercise. I know, but I'm glad we both. I'm glad we both did this. Um, so what we did is we took mock. We took big boards from ESPN, The Ringer, and Bleacher Report. And only considered players at the Bucks pick or below. So I did 23 to 40 just to not go super far down. Uh, so De Silva was above 23 on all of them. I imagine they'd have to trade up or something crazy would have to happen for the Bucks to be able to take De Silva. But I, I don't want to not include him. I mean, it just makes sense. We don't want to not be covered on a player we like this much. And I think there's not many, I don't think there's anyone else above here who I 
either A, would think would fall or B, like enough to include, right? Like that's why I made the exception. No, 100%. And yeah, we don't have to belabor that point. Just another, like a lot of things you could say about George, you can say about De Silva, right? In terms of like yeah. being a big wing, shooting ability, like just being able 39% to... 39% from three, 162 attempted threes was fourth most on this list. He shot a bunch. Yeah, he shot still near really 40. five times per game. Yeah. And still almost basically at 40% is crazy, crazy efficiency. Yeah. The red so, flag is he's 23 and he's not yeah. a great athlete. Oh, but he's like, it's he's a really smart. To the chest. He's going to figure it out. He's <laughs> going he's gonna to be the red flag is he's 23. I'm getting old, I know. man. Hey, she's telling me I'm, I'm older than Brandon Whedon at draft day now. So <laughs> you're, I'm basically done. <laughs> hey, you can still get drafted. Well, I'm a year past. It'd be a new record now if they took me in the first round. I think it'd be an even worse pick. <laughs> hey, you never know. I don't think oh, I've ever no. seen you throw a football, but I used to be. I have small hands. Mm. That's why I couldn't pitch either. I can't get enough spin. Anyway, we're not talking about this. Now. I had Ware three, so you had Ware and then De Silva. Who is your third? My number three was Bobby Clinton. My number four. Yeah. So I, I he rose from. He was the one where I texted you and said I have a new number one. I slowed down on him a little bit. He was going to be the number Keyshawn. one. He was going to be the number one. Oh. I like I like Bobby quite a bit. Yeah, I mean it's it's like what you see is what you get with him. Like it's another like what we were talking about with George De Silva, another big wing. You can sort of slide in there, try to be a defensive menace, get in there. Just what the shooting concerns me with him. Yeah, it does. So he shot thirty three point seven percent in uh, Cairn, but he shot eighty one percent from the line, and he did take three point five per game. So, like, the results weren't great from three. I would label him as someone you'd expect to develop as a shooter. Uh, he yeah. is 21 years old. so not super young. He did play a college year, then went to Australia. He did really good at the combine corner. He shot 68% in that drill. Didn't do great on the pull-up dribble. That's, like, one of the knocks on him is, like, probably is not going to be a guy who creates his own shot. This that is frankly which is again, fine. Which is, like, from a Bucks perspective, position. you're not worried. Yeah, well, the Bucks aren't taking him at 15, like – Please be honest someday. Like, no, just be like a good, you know, tertiary wing or even lower than tertiary, quaternary wing, quattro, quattro. And that's all the Bucks need. So I agree. I'm not really concerned about that. I, I don't love the three point percentage, but, you know, I'm not I'm not terrified by it. And like I said, I'm just obsessed with the big wing idea. And I really like his defensive upside. And six, it, eight, nearly six, nine. And by the way, the heights I'm sharing, I pulled all of standard height wingspan from the combine so these are without shoes so they'll probably play a little bigger than this but i wanted to do this because you look through and it's like deron holmes is 610 now deron we'll get there deron holmes is not 610 he is uh, maybe if he's got some platforms on but so i wanted to standardize this so Bobby is taller than de silva taller than Keyshawn. six eight and three quarters with a 611 wingspan is pretty dang big it is and like, here's my thing. I, I've, I've talked a lot about the Bucks needing to get a big, need to get a big, need to get a big. The issue with this draft is, is that outside of where none of these bigs really move me too much. I mean, we'll talk about Holmes in a little bit and it's like, Missy. yeah, it's like, first of all, like you just mentioned with Holmes, not that big. No. Uh, and, yeah, I don't, and, I don't, I'm worried about him defending the five. We'll talk about him, but I'm worried about that. And which is why he fell a lot. Yeah. Yeah, uh, same for me and just the rest of the bigs they don't really they don't really i don't know none of them jump out to me as much as where does yeah you you and ease missy took the same amount of college threes last year yeah which is great. like you would expect but it's not it's not great yeah you did okay at the combine though which i think is really interesting but but Bobby, i don't really think it's interesting I think it's a little interesting. It's I think a little it's a, interesting. It's a little interesting, but it's also like you'll watch uh, warm up footage of Andre Drummond. Like it makes the it Ryan through. Dunn thing even sadder, right? <laughs> even <laughs> wide open. But again, like the free throws are are prescriptive. We'll, we'll get to Missy in a little bit. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah. But Bobby, eighty one percent from free throw, like good touch, you know, really good defensive upside. Like I think if you walk away with George De Silva or Bobby, Bobby, you feel the worst about, I think, contributing soon. People will disagree with me. I think Keyshawn can play. I, re- I think he's a little I light, think he but I think play. he can play. Uh, but I think you're like, okay, these are all guys we feel pretty good about of, you know, maybe we don't have the perfect five next to Giannis for the future, but maybe we do have the perfect four next to him. And that, as we've seen in the playoffs in the years past, in some matchups is maybe even more important. Um, 
so that's so that the, we have the same top four. Oh, no, you you don't have Keyshawn. Who's your number four? My number four. Who's my number four? Sorry, I lost my tab. <laughs> You're um, good. My number five might be a surprise. So I want to hear your number four. My number four was uh, Isaiah Collier. I didn't know where to put him. So technically, he dropped on only one board. So Isaiah Collier, I think, probably goes in the lottery. But who was it? Who dropped him? It was uh, uh, it was Bleacher Report, right? Oh, yeah. At 23. So they had – maybe I think it added mock draft, not big board, to see like where they would actually fall, not mm-hmm. where they were ranked. So – um, Collier is like, uh, it would be the most audacious pick they could make. Like, oh, yeah. I really think if he's there at 23, they would just trade this thing. He is a six, two and a half point guard. Who's not a great shooter who probably needs to be on ball, but like has a lot of potential in that spot. Like if they drafted him and kept him, what you're saying as John Horst or, you know, insert bucks executive, but probably John Horst at this point, Milt Newton. Sure. Is, Doc Rivers. Hey, Dame, we have your successor now. That's what the pick would be. It would. That This is a point guard. This is not a guy who's going to play next to Dame. I don't think ever. Maybe a little bit, like maybe in like a two-point guard. You know what I mean? But like you're not starting him. He's a, a small on-ball point guard. He's not like a great defender, I don't think. He could probably develop there. But he's like your wrecking ball, get downhill and play make or finish at the rim. Really great finisher point guard. I had him seven. And I think he's probably the best prospect on here, but from a which Bucks is which construct, is why I had him four because I was like yeah. I don't know where else to put him. <laughs> I know I, I really I had him because I was like I, I, I him down have, a little bit. I have my guys that I'm like sure of, and then I was as I was working on the list, I was like I can't just ignore him. <laughs> yeah, you can't put him like 15th. I, I probably have him too low, frankly. But I'm just like they're not. T- I'd be stunned if he was there. I'd be even more stunned if they actually used the pick and took him because again, it's really like. All right, Dame, teach him, teach him your ways. We got the next Giannis point guard here. And it's I mean, like they're much different players, but I, very, I, it'd be, yeah. Very, very different players. But I think you would just have to take it from a talent's perspective, right? Yeah, I mean, it, he's he's a caliber of prospect above, I think, everyone we've talked about so far. Absolutely. Maybe Ware is in that convo, but otherwise, just him. Yeah. Who was, uh, who was your number four? Uh, Bobby was my four, oh, so my sorry. five was Jalen Tyson. Okay, okay. So the Cal wing did a lot on offense, can like create his own shot and distribute. The knock is he's only six five and a half, but he has a six eight wingspan. So he's like, you know, around that Marjan level of size. I think Marjan's longer and probably a little bigger. Um, but he shot thirty six percent again, though pretty high de- degree of difficulty and one hundred and forty three. So he's taken more than four a game. Shot nearly 80%, 79.6 from free throw, and did really well in the combine drills. He's 21. I, I just think he's a really skilled offensive wing. I really struggled with him and my guy in number six on who to prioritize. But I think there's just more chance that Jalen Tyson is a good player on his rookie deal than the player below him. So that's why I put him at five. No, that's he's a guy I've seen I've seen go in the 30s. Like to me, if you get him with your with 33, that's a really good pick of like. Maybe he overlaps a bit with our current young wings, but maybe he ends up better. So let's see. Yeah, I had him uh, seven. Okay, so not that much. That's why I had Collier. So we have pretty similar lists so far, which is impressive, I think. I think so. Uh, who was, uh, that was your number five? Five, yeah. Five. My five was uh, Keyshawn George. Okay. Oh, so we had almost the same top five. And maybe we have the same top seven. We might. We'll see about uh, – number six is a guy I've been high on. I don't think in our mock draft you're as high on, so I'm guessing not, but we'll see. My number six is Tyler Smith. My number six is also Tyler Smith. Wow. So I have George De Silva, Ware, Bobby, Tyson, Smith, Collier. You have uh, – what do you have? I, Ware, wait. De Silva, Bobby. Yeah, Collier, George, Smith. Okay, so not Tyson. Do you have Tyson seven? No. Oh, that would. Oh, you said do you have him eight? You said or nine? No, I think I had him. I no, I have him eight. Yeah. Okay, so we're still we're pretty close here. If Tyler I said Smith, if I didn't say eight earlier, I miscounted. Gotcha. Tyler Smith is like I think has the highest chance out of any of the players like in my top six of just not being very good his first couple of years. 
He was pretty lost defensively in a lot of his time, but it's the G League Ignite team. It, they were literally exactly, a mess the whole year. Exactly. Like, That's like a lot of what it comes down to for me is we don't know a lot about this kid, right? <laughs> like, no. For, well, it, we it, know some things. We know some. We know he's 6'9 with a 7'1 wingspan. We exactly. know he moves extremely fluidly. We know he's a very good shooter. 36%. But on the Ignite team with their horrible spacing, he took 161 threes, shot 73% from free throw, which isn't great, but not horrible. I think his shot looks really good, though. Like he It's a pretty really looking shot. He's, it's quick. And he did well on both of the combine shooting drills, too. So it's just like, okay, 6'9", 7'1 wingspan. Can you teach him what to do defensively? Is it going to be a process during year one and maybe beyond? Yes. But you can still be valuable, man. At that size, that frame with that jumper, like that's an exciting pick. Here's the thing. Like out of all of these big wings, I think I would feel most comfortable with him playing like a small ball five. Yeah, because he's got the real – he's got the real – he needs to add a lot of weight to do it. I don't know if he can do it year one. No, probably but, not year one to project. But to on him. his rookie deal for sure. Six nine seven one wingspan. I mean he's – Like you can do a lot with that. He is literally bigger than Deron Holmes who exactly. is being mocked as a center. And he's younger and he's not as – like actually he's not younger. No, he is. Yeah, yeah he is. He's not yet 20 also. Ugh. So he is just like uh, – I know. He is just like – one of the more intriguing, like his upside, I think, is a really good player. Yeah, absolutely. I I think there's more risk. Yeah, I think he comes in. You know, you know who he reminded me of when when Ooh. I was doing this. It's not a perfect comp. There's a certain mountain that Jordan likes. Jordan Tresky. Splash. No, the 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 original mount. Oh what boy. Oh Ur- boy, let's not Ursan. No. Oh no, was it who was it? Mirza? To... Mirza. Mirza? Oh my god. I not the same guy. Fears I'm of like... the Mirza. Yeah, Fears of the Mirza. Mount Mirza is erupting. Mirza Toledovich, by the way, for anyone who's Yeah. Uh... Yeah, we should we should not assume everyone knows <laughs> Mount Mirza, what the hell that is. Uh Mirza Toledovich. Uh signed in the, the great uh 2016 Cap Spike summer. It was unfair that they were able to get him. It really was. For poor, poor Mirza. Do uh, uh, you know what? I think he works for the uh, – what country was he from? Oh, God. Uh, I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, uh, Bosnia. Bosnia and Herzegovina. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he works for the Basketball Federation, so that's good. Uh, yeah, that's cool. At least he did. I haven't checked him. Yeah. But yeah. he's what he reminded me of. Just like a big guy, like a bigger guy who, you know, it, he needs to be able to figure it out defensively. The good thing is, is he's 19 and not 30 something when the yeah. Bucks got him. And he's quick. He's athletic. He's able to do that. He can learn that much easier than Mirza. But just like a tall guy who will just go out there and bomb. He is one of my great sleepers in this class. Given some of the guys we have and we'll talk about, the fact that he is like, I've seen him in the 30s. I think that's crazy. Oh, absolutely. I think you can get I like I like Tyler Kolick. I have him 19th on my list. Like it, it, actually no, these numbers are 18th. My numbers are not adding up right now, but it's like we know the upside of a player like this. Yeah. Like Tyler Kolick's a better player right now. For he sure. Six he, one he helps with a team sub 6'3" wingspan. Now. Which is why he's probably getting mocked in the first round because those first round teams are teams that are ready the, to compete. The Phoenix smoke has been crazy. Right? Like it's it's really just because they desperately need a point guard. Uh, he's probably helped them. Desperately. Uh, he would help them, absolutely. Uh, my Marquette guy, Tyler Kolick. Um, yeah. I should have him above Ryan Dunn. Like I said, the, the end of my list right. is not ideal. But he's, like, let's say in that 15 to 21 range. Or 20 range. There should be 20 total. Okay. Um, so what, where were we at? Tyler Smith. So that was our six. My seven was Collier, who again would just be like, this would be the most fascinating pick to me. Really would be. Again, it would be one of the stories of the draft. I think if you're, if you're taking Collier, I think you're trading him. I think most likely, but I mean, if they love him, they love him. I think it'd be a wasted opportunity. Yeah, probably. In terms of asset I don't think management. he'd be able to. I don't think he'd be able to develop either. So I, yeah. I agree. I think yeah, he wouldn't be really able to develop. And if you're the Bucks, you have limited assets to begin with. If a guy falls to you and a team wants him, like what do you think the Suns would do for Isaiah Collier? If well, I know the Suns, pick ahead, I know so the Suns just... are picking ahead, 
But like, let's say they want him again. I know they don't have another pick, but could you? Suns are a bad example. Yeah, I, I know. I said the Suns because uh, we were talking about them at the point guard. But like, what's another team? Uh, the Heat. The Heat desperately need a point guard. Yeah. Like if I they, mean Denver. What if Denver Den- wants a backup point guard? Exactly. Like they're they're already going to lose KCP probably this summer. Yeah. I know he's not a point guard, but in terms of like guard depth, but yeah, they, they they do need guards. Yeah, like can you get like move back a couple picks and then pick up another future first or something? I would I would want to do that. Absolutely, or even just like a high second. All right, if you really like him, give up a first, Denver, That's true. or a couple seconds. That's true. Um, but yeah, I agree. Who is your number eight? Eves Misi. Same here, buddy. Is he actually? Same here. Oh, he okay. sure is. Uh, the non-shooter, a total non-shooting big, but however, six, defensive six, ten, monster, defensive monster, the longest player on here, and one of the tall. Oh no, sorry, Kellel Ware is taller and longer. The second tallest. And Ware, longest really, player. I can, the more we go through this, by the way, the more I'm solidified at Ware at number one on my board. By the way, I like him a lot. He's. I would be really excited if they took him. I think, I think I'm top, setting myself up for failure. By the way, my top three are the ones I want most: George De Silva, Ware. And then my next group is Clintman, Tyson, Smith. And then I, I, Misi would be really fun. So nearly 6'11", 6'2", wingspan, just didn't shoot at all. Uh, and only was a 61% foul shooter. So I don't really picture him as a shooter at the next level either. Um, but the athletic monster probably is going to be switchable. Great rim protector. That, I think definitely going to be switchable. Yeah. I mean, it's really like huge defensive upside. And I think it'll, it'll be challenging at times for him. I think you try and stagger so he doesn't play a ton with Giannis early. But he gives you a true defensive, athletic, twitchy big, which the Bucks have really not had at this level. Uh, Larry Sanders. Ever? Yeah, I was going to yeah. say Larry Sanders is the closest proxy. Long, long, know? long, long time. And he's a lot bigger than Larry was. Do you know Do you know who he reminds me of? This might be not the best comp. Who? It's not your guy. We're close. Same team. Jalen Smith. A little bit. The, oh, really? Yeah, I don't like that. I think in terms of I've like... I've heard I, that for Holmes, I think, too. Yeah, but I think... I think I think Misi is more of like... A, projects to be a way better defender than Jalen Smith. Even Yeah, and I, I think... I don't, I don't know if Jalen Smith could defend the five, which is why I don't love the comp. Because that's a game changer. If you can truly defend the five that's or not. Fair. I think the Pacers have tried to have Jalen Smith defend the five. Yeah, and I think Isaiah Stewart still plays my guy, which tells you how that's working. And Isaiah obviously Jackson. Turner as well. Oh, yeah, what I say? Isaiah Stewart. Stewart. Another guy who I don't think can defend the five. No. No. Uh, but Detroit's going to Detroit, you know? Yeah. Uh, hey, James Wiseman, baby, one day. I don't know who I would count miss you to. Capella? Now Capella's of an offensive threat. Um, Lively? I mean, that's going to be a super popular one. With I don't even well think it's Lively. I think Lively brings more on the offensive end. I mean, he doesn't do too much besides just, like, catch lobs and rim run. Yeah. He made a three in game four. He did make a three. But, like, that kind of player. DeAndre Jordan back in the day. Yeah. I, don't no, know if he's, I think he's a good screener. But, like, that kind of player where it's, like, defend the rim, more switchable than DeAndre Jordan was. That just Hassan really awesome. Whiteside. I mean, like, no, John I don't, I don't want to say it. No, because John Henson could shoot. Could he? He did yeah. one year. He, he at least had a hook shot. That's fair. Misi's coming in really raw. Offensively, I think he's going to like just you know eat up some garbage off the boards and get some lobs and stuff. I'll never forget going to the first regular season game in Pfizer, seeing seeing John Henson shooting threes. I'm like, this is this is the good stuff right here because it was yeah. the first Bud game, and it's like, oh, we we've made it. <laughs> Good times. Uh, I don't think we're going to see that from Eves Missy in his first game. Of no, Fiserv. absolutely not. Which is why this is what the point I was trying to get to earlier, where it's like the rest of the bigs don't really move me as much as where. Yeah. Because every other big on this board is just such glaring flaws, right? Yeah, like Filipowski was eligible for this. I had him 16th. I just I don't see it. I, I, don't, I keep looking. I don't. I know he does some cool things. Negative wingspan, bad foul shooter. Like he, people call him a shooter. He shot sub thirty five percent from three and sixty seven percent from free throw. Doesn't yeah, doesn't project to be a great shooter. Doesn't I don't doesn't really move me as a defender. Athlete. No, yeah. 
just I don't know. I don't see it. The rest of the bigs don't really move me. At least Misi, like he's projects to be elite at the defensive end. Yeah, that that's that's why he is above any other big besides where. And then I have Holmes nine. That, that's Those, where I have Tyson. The, okay, the size concern is real for Holmes. Six eight and three quarters is like yeah, smaller than Bobby Portis. So I do think he'll end up in that same like. You know, he can go out and maybe trap and maybe he can rotate and switch better than a Bobby. But even at 7-1 wingspan, I'm just not sure you can really play the five, the true defend the rim five at sub 6-9 height. Maybe he can do it. And he did shoot 38.6% from three. It was a big jump from his prior seasons. It was only on 2.3 threes per game or 2.5 threes per game. 71% from free throws. Okay. He did well at both combine drills. I, I just... A, there's like so many little things about him where I'm just like, I don't think he's a real five, so he's not a stretch five. I'm not sure how real the shooting is or how consistent it's going to be. For those reasons, I wouldn't be that excited. You know, the second round for sure. But first round, if some of these guys above him are on the board, I'd be disappointed. Yeah, for sure. I mean, what what do I have? In- Wasn't a great rebounder, I don't think, either. I think Dayton didn't rebound well as a team. Yeah, I have him, I have him 10. Okay. So, I mean, not too far off, but yeah. like just I, I don't know. I, I know we've we've talked about him a lot before and like the wingspan obviously is a big plus. It allows him to size up. Just not super big. I mean, again, doesn't project to be the best of shooters. I just I, I worry about throwing him in his rookie year. You know, that's what I worry about. Yeah. Like, what are you going to do there? I agree. I'm reordering. Oh. There, now I have I need to re- resort this now so I have the right order. There we go. Um, but yeah, I I, I mean I think I think maybe he can play year one, but I I just don't know what position. And with the Bucks that's difficult with their big rotation already. Like I don't think he adds anything they don't have already in Bobby Portis. That's true. That's true. Which makes my which makes my number nine just crazy. Who do you got? Baylor Shireman. I have him 12th, but I don't – just the more you dig in, it's like, oh, he does real stuff. Like he does stuff on the ball. I don't think he's probably going to be able to defend. That's the big question. No, that's, that's the thing, which goes against everything I really stand for. Dude got up 8.2 threes per game. 289 attempted threes. I'll it's tell nuts. you what, man. That guy shot him, man. Which is – it's – it's with the Bucks, right? Yeah. Offense was not the issue. I mean, offense kind of became an issue uh, when you don't have Giannis and Dame in the postseason, but that's a different story. Yeah. But offense yeah, Baylor wasn't, wasn't fixing the offense last yeah. last postseason. Yeah, but offense wasn't the problem, right? It was a yeah. lot of an, a a mess on the defensive end. Yeah, Baylor Shireman does not fix that. <laughs> no, I, six six two and a or six six excuse me and a quarter with a six eight and a quarter wingspan. So it's positive. Yeah, I just – I'm worried about the defensive end. But, again, with the second-round pick, like, I, I think he's probably going to be an NBA player. Like, good size, real shooter. He overlaps so much with A.J. Green, and my hunch is A.J. Green is better. So part of me is just like, is there ever room for him to play if the Bucks continue to have A.J. Green on the roster? Like, do you need two of those guys? And I know A.J. Green impressed us defensively, but he's not, he's not a lockdown defender, right? Like, no. do, do you want another I think he's shooting be specialist? Than Shireman, but for sure, I do too. I don't. I don't know. I don't really think. I, I don't think he's a very box pick. I, uh, he's a bud. He, pick. he was a bud pick. Yeah, yeah. Phoenix Suns, baby. Um, yeah, so you, had, you had him ten. I had him nine. Oh wow! So I had uh, Kevin McCullough Junior ten for okay. the reason that you talked about. So. I look at him, and I think the, he, there's an injury concern. Like, he missed combine testing. Him and uh, Daddy, who I had 11th, spoiler alert, he's my next guy. These are the two who don't, I don't have the combine metrics for, but I do have their, like, height and stuff. So, McCullough Jr., only 6'5 and a quarter, but 6'9 wingspan, was a really good defender at Kansas. So, that's why he shot up my board a bit here. Like, okay, a small wing who can defend. Not small, but, you know. Uh, actually a small wing with a decent wingspan small, a small nba wing yeah for sure um only shot 33 percent his last year but it wasn't 80 percent free throw shooter i'm not sure he's really going to be a good nba shooter though like he took 4.5 per game like he got him up he didn't shoot great the free throw is good but he's 23 so at a certain point i'm like 
you know, how much of your game is really going to develop? Like, is he ever going to be a 40% three point shooter? I'm not sure, but you know, a, a six foot five wing who can really defend is useful. He is probably the guy most on here though. I fear is like whatever sets him apart from the Marjan and Ajax, you know, like how it's, it's it, it, it comes it, yeah. into like, can one of them, right? Right. That's what it really becomes is you just get a bunch of these guys who, who yeah. are who are just these rangy wings, theoretically, who theoretically can dribble, pass, shoot, drive, uh, attack the basket, those type of athlete type guys. And maybe one of them just you just yeah. need one of them to hit. Right. I just don't know if it's, it's like the process, old. but with just ridiculously lower stakes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would not like this with the first round pick. I actually, this is a dumb part of my board. I would prefer my 11th ranked player over my 10th ranked player with the first round pick, but just strictly because of upside. That's fair. My so my who, who do you uh, like my, 10. My 10 was Holmes. Oh, okay. So who do you have 11? Uh, Calvin McCullough Jr. Oh, nice. So yeah, do you agree? It's kind of like, like that's a useful player, but I'm just not sure anything about him stands out. Which is like the fastest way to not play in the NBA. It, it truly is, right? Like maybe you just need defense. That's you need, maybe if the defense does, then maybe. And as a as a uh, as an older player, you would hope that he comes in more refined than the defensive end. That's a good point. Like you, you look at uh, like the the Virginia guys, the 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 UConn guys, yeah. and by Virginia guys, I mean Malcolm Brogdon. UConn guys, I mean Andre Jackson Jr. We can just come in a little bit of older guy, but just more polished on the defensive end. Yeah. I, I would rather take McCuller than Dunn because I, th- I think Dunn's a better defender. But I think McCuller has offensive upside in a way. I, I mean, Dunn, listen, six, six and a quarter height, seven, one and a half wingspan, a tenacious defender. I get Who it. Who do you think is a better prospect, Ryan Dunn or Chris Livingston? Like right now? Yeah. I would rather have Chris Livingston for sure. Yeah, there you go. It's just for this team specific, but really for any team, like if you just can't do anything offensively, it's just hard, man. It really is. I mean, I've seen people cop him to Andre Jackson Jr. It, like, he shot the ball well. If Ryan Dunn shot the ball that well, it'd be a miracle. Oh my and, god! Like, Ajax is more of a ball handler. I, I, I just I'm not that interested. Ajax um, is a better passer. Yeah, I've got Daddy eleventh, Pacon okay. Daddy A. Really like a projection, kind of a big wing, but not that big. Like almost six, it's almost just six like a, eight, just six like six a mid size wing. Yeah, yeah, um, but it's all like projection. He had some good games, I think, against Risa Shea over in France. Um, we're at the point though where like below him, I have Shireman, where I'm just like, and like he's right between McCullough and Shireman, who are much more polished prospects. And I just kind of toss him here because I'm like, yeah, maybe he ends up good, but I, I really don't know and. You know, I think it'd be a fun swing, but I wouldn't be like jumping out of my seat if the Bucks got. Actually, I wouldn't want him in the first either. I lied. It'd be fun. It'd be a fun <laughs> second rounder. I think it'd be a reach in the first round. No, that's that's a hundred percent fair. You're not you're not prepared for a number twelve. Who is it? It's Tyler Cole. Oh, I have fifteen now. I moved him up. Oh, did you? Talking. So not yeah, not that. Crazy. I mean, I think he's good. Like I really think he's good. I just am like, it's just a, not an archetype I'm super interested in. Just just try and score the ball. But here's the thing. With, here's my thing with Cole. Because I probably watched him more than a lot of other college prospects. Is that I... Here. Here's a fun story. Me, me, and, me and our good friend Numak. We were at a market. Yeah. We're just sitting next to each other talking about this. Like, you know, trying to talk about how these guys would fit in at the NBA level. All these guys. Because we're just nerds. Because we're, we're just yep. sports nerds. That's just how it is. And, and uh, I love him for it. Uh, but... We're just sitting there and we're talking about Tyler Kolek and we're just watching him. We were, we set a goal for ourselves. Okay, let's watch Tyler Kolek on these next like five or six possessions and just say, how many times does he actually look to score the ball? Do you know how many times he looked to score the ball on those six possessions? Once. Zero. Yeah, I'm not surprised. It's like it's some, he would do the thing that Andre Jackson Jr. does that just makes me so upset is that he would get penetration and not even look up towards the rim. Not even look yeah. up. Like, you're just immediately looking to pass out. You don't have an attacking instinct. But here's the thing. <laughs> the passing is really good. The passing is really good. And another thing, the Bucks don't need him to look at the basket. <laughs> and and he, can, he can really shoot, too. I think he was 39% last year, 38.8 this the year. The shot doesn't look as game. good to me. Like, well, no, I think it goes in, though. And it does go in. Good too. It's just like, for me, you need to be wide open. 
Yeah, which is his preference anyway. Yeah, exactly. He'll he'll be wide open and be like, some guy even more wide open. Uh, yeah. I'm going to make a decision here. No one's coming at me. I guess oh, coach is going to be really mad at me if I don't take this shot. Okay, I guess I'll take it. Yeah. That type of play. The Bucks don't need him to score, and which is what the appeal is for Phoenix, I think, as well, and why there's a lot of smoke with him at Phoenix at 17, just purely because they need an organizer, and Kolik is there. Right. Yeah, I think Phoenix, though, you have the benefit of like, I think it's harder to ignore a guy because Phoenix has like, it's more egalitarian. Like there's not a clear one and two and three. And they're like, they should have better spacing. We'll see who they play at the five this year. But like, I'm a little worried about like the Giannis, Giannis Kolek lineups where it's just like the other team is just like, yeah, dribble wherever you want. We're just going to put two guys by the rim now. I don't, and I think we've also talked about this. I honestly don't think it matters. Uh, with maybe not. I think we're at a point with the Bucks roster with Dame and Chris and Giannis where you can have two non-shooters. I want to look up. Actually, I'm glad you mentioned this. So I've been digging in, like the Andre Jackson Jr. thing. I think is really interesting, and I'm a little perturbed that the Bucks lost the Ajax Giannis minutes last year. But I want to see right now, did they lose the Ajax Dame Giannis minutes? Ajax, I, I can't imagine there were a lot of those. Let's see. Uh, While well, you look, I'll talk about why. But we 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 saw like a lot of Ajax Giannis lineups out there. I think I think we probably saw more Dame Ajax than we saw Ajax Giannis. And I don't think we lost, reason. saw a lot of all three. Um, 175 minutes, they were plus 3.3. They so were that's solid. 175 that's solid. minutes is actually shocking to me. Yeah. I, I did not but think yeah, it was that much. I, I, so they must have been really good with Dame then. Which uh, makes sense. You alleviate some of the pressure on Dame. Don't it, yeah. you, you try your best to, you no, know. No, really. they actually overall lost the Dame minutes too. They just, lost? just the two man Ajax okay. and Dame. So, the, so those minutes, the plus... They pretty much lost all Ajax minutes was the issue. I think so the, when he played plus, earlier... What was year. it? Plus three with Dame, with Dame Ajax, Giannis? Yeah, so I'm in gonna, 200, I'm gonna 292 that. Giannis Ajax, they were minus 3.2. In 279 Dame Ajax, they were minus four. These are probably some of the same games. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb them. and say that plus just comes from having Dame and Giannis on the court at the same time. Yeah, I imagine there's not many groups that are bad with those two. But I'm a, I'm a little like I don't know. I think Ajax is good. I think I think he's got it figured out enough. But I think there is a little bit of a spacing concern. And I think because of that, I don't want to add more players with a spacing concern. So like if you're taking a Misi or someone like that, like it, that's a little I'm a little concerned. So that's why I really went with a lot of shooters. Misi I just couldn't ignore. Just too intriguing. See, yeah, but here's the thing. That's why I have a guy like Misi for obvious reasons ahead of Kolek is because yeah. you're not really going to see Dame Misi Giannis minutes. You're going to see Dame Misi minutes. You're not going to see Misi wins the job. You're not gonna, no. They they see a guy dunk from more than more than once per every five games. They're like, oh, is this legal outside of Giannis? <laughs> I wonder. This? I wonder if they're going to do a celebration for his first alley oop as they did with Bobby. I want to look up who do you think is second on the Bucks in dunks last season, and how many dunks do you think they had? Second, okay, so first is Giannis. Can you at least give me a baseline on how many Giannis had once you get that pulled up? <laughs> Giannis had two hundred and fifty-one dunks. Okay, I'm going to go out on a limb and say no one else had more than one hundred and fifty. No one else had more than forty-two. Oh, Giannis Wait. had more than the rest of the Bucks combined, probably tripled. Is it Brooke? At least doubled. It is Brooke with 42. That's, I mean, that's, yeah, that's the, that's the easy answer there. That's yeah. depressing. Bobby Portis had 22. There's Ajax no shot. Had, Ajax had 16. Marjan in, had 12. And so Ajax and Marjan played a combined sub 1200 minutes. It was exa- 1180 minutes, which is like less than half of Brooke, barely more than half of Bobby's minutes combined. And they had, 28 combined, which is more than Bobby and more than halfway to Brooke for sure. Then Dame had eight. Shout out Dame at age 33. Uh, Thanasis had seven hey. in 155 minutes. Let's go. Malik Beasley had five. Pat C had three. You will not guess who's next with three. Next with three. Oh, God. Is it 
Livingston? He had one. Is it Bossman? He did not dunk. Oh, God. who had th- Who's a guy with three dunks on the Bucks roster? Is it? Oh, is it? It's a two way, isn't it? No. Oh. There's only mm-hmm. two other players oh, who dunked. Chris? Chris only had two. Who had three dunks? I, this is shocking. And we said AJ Green? But no, he did not dunk. It's my close personal friend. No, he did not. Danilo <laughs> Gallinari, three dunks. Yo, shout out Gallo, man. Maybe we're undervaluing Gallo. Maybe maybe that's good. We didn't mention him. Maybe a minute one, it's the box oh, we saw him, Danilo we Gallinari. We completely forgot about him. I didn't forget. I didn't forget. I did. I did. Sorry well, to your close didn't. personal so we're, friend, Danilo Gallinari. Yeah, that, that's okay. That's okay. Anyway, so I, had, I, had, I had Daddy I had A11. Like 12. I had uh, Shireman 12. I moved up Kentucky's Justin Edwards to 13. He's 13 for me? Nice. I, I just like 6'6", six, 6'10", six, six, wing, span. I don't know why I tried to shorten that. Uh, only shot 36.5% from three, but 77 from free throw. Didn't shoot many per game. Like I think he's probably a shooter. He did okay in the combine drills. He's 20 years old. Again, I'm just like pretty – like. Okay, wing height, but the six ten wingspan is nice. Like, like okay, I could see him being a good wing player. I'll, I'll throw him up decently high here. Again, I wouldn't be thrilled, but in the second round, I'd be like, yeah, let's try it. Let's is this like another Livingston swing, basically unheralded Kentucky guy? Like, I think he probably did more in college than Livingston, but maybe not. I actually don't remember how much Livingston played, but I, I'll be. He didn't play a swing. lot in college. Yeah. And obviously, there's other Kentucky guys who are a lot more heralded than Edwards. But sometimes I, I don't mind just like you know he was like a, the third rated prospect in the class. But yeah, the thing like is, you, Kentucky the also had one and two. The talent, yeah. There, like right? let's just let's just see if he was underutilized or needed more time to develop. Exactly. Like not everyone blooms at the same time. It's tough. These are kids. Like come yeah. on. <laughs> like that's that's. I think that's something we need to consider. Even though it makes me upset, is that yeah. like these are these are kids. I know they're not technically children, but they're kids. You know, I agree with you. Um, so you had you had Justin Edwards thirteen. Who was your twelve? Shireman, right? Shireman, yeah. Okay. So my thirteen was Edwards. My fourteen was Dottie. Okay. Yeah. Just say, like right. Just maybe he's good someday. Yeah. And then my fifteen. Sorry. Who was your fourteen? AJ Johnson. Ooh. Like the stats are horrible. True. Like just project. I only threw him here because Vicini really likes him, and apparently does he, he did know really how well to at the combine. does he know how to like shoot a basketball? I don't think so. Yeah, so like, yeah the, I, I the, might the move shot him down again. Is like it doesn't even look good. No, it doesn't. I should move him down. But like I see, I see the vision, right? Like he projects, bless you, to the YouTube. Thank viewers. you, and I mean to yeah. you, but for the YouTube yeah. viewers, <laughs> you nailed it. I did mute for audio. No one heard that, but yeah, you could see it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> just yeah, I, I should move him down though, because I'm just like he's sub six five. Like he's, he's small. Gonna, I'm, moving, I'm, moving, I'm putting him below Kolik. He's going above the Dunn line. Actually, no, I'm gonna put him below Dunn. I'm gonna put him below Dunn too. Below Dunn? Yeah. Yeah, I get it. I think I think Ryan Dunn and AJ Johnson are two of my least favorite prospects. Because yeah, I, I just probably guys I should move up here that I've just had like condemned to the bottom for a while. I don't even. Maybe we're being too harsh on Ryan Dunn. I don't know. I mean, I, 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 I was versus how I was with AJ Johnson. That's for sure. Because I, so have, I have done at down. sixteen. I have him at fifteen. So okay. I had Filipowski below him. Now I have AJ Johnson below him. I have Johnny Furphy at eighteen. Just because I'm just like, I have Furphy at do? fifteen. What do you do, Johnny Furphy? It's a good question, right? But here's the thing: he has the body type of a prototypical NBA wing, right? Like, kind of. Like he doesn't have like a massive plus wingspan or anything. I think he's like I think it's even. It's six seven and a half height, six eight wingspan. So basically even, yeah. So he's like solid three height, but not a great shooter. I don't know if he's he's pretty athletic, but I'm just like I, I've seen a lot of guys like this in the G League. And it's like maybe he's good. Maybe he figures it out. Maybe he ex- excels as a driver, right? Like yeah. if I've talked a lot about how I not only want guys who can shoot, I want guys who can attack off the catch, right? Attack a close up. Johnny Furphy, I think, is is suited to do that. I just don't think guys are going to close out hard enough for him to get that leverage that he needs. Right, right. That's the thing. I don't know if he'd ever play with the Bucks year one. With all the guys above him, like we'd have to come in and be like just clearly better than like a Marjan, who also wasn't really playing. 
No, that's true. That's true. I mean, maybe maybe there's more opportunity. We'll see how the rotation changes. I would imagine there's going to be more vets brought in too. Yeah. Um, I, I had Cam Christie even below him at 19. And this one, if you just look at the stats, you're like, how could you say that? 39% from three. More than five attempts per game. Really good free throw shooter too. Just ne- could not score at the rim. And it's just like, uh, you might just not be an NBA player then. Six, four and a half, six, eight wingspan. Like, there's a lot of good stuff. Like, it'd be an intriguing second round pick. He's not even 19 yet either. He is uh, Max Christie's brother. Oh, yeah. I think it was like sub 50% at the rim. Like, Max really, Christie, really another guy bad. who didn't play. Yeah. So it's, it, I'm just, and then I had KJ Simpson below him, which is probably unfair. But I look at him as a point guard I like less than Kolek because he wasn't as good of a distributor and he's even shorter. But he has a longer wingspan. No, that's Those fair. were all the players. I, that was the 20 I considered for this. So hopefully I didn't miss too many people that folks are really excited about for the Bucks. But I think that's pretty comprehensive. No. To be honest, now that I'm looking at my list, I only had 18. I don't know what happened to my last two. No, I mean that's – I just kept adding guys because I was like, oh, he was – I think I ended up considering everyone between – 23 and 30 just to get like every first round grade that we looked at low first round grade so that's how i ended up with this many players and then i added tristan de silva too yeah so i, I don't know where we stopped i think i, I had at 14 furphy yeah. 15 don 16 filipowski 17 i had him 17 as well and then aj johnson at 18 yeah i could see putting filipowski over i, I would put aj johnson over him just because I, I i see the archetype that could work for him and i really honestly don't with filipowski that's the thing, right? It's like a I, negative wingspan offensive center who's maybe not actually a good shooter. It's like, okay, what's left? Okay, who who's a good comp for that? Who's a good, a good old, passer? Old Bucks comp for that. That's what I like doing with these guys. Is like Urson? Urson? No, that's no. disrespectful to Urson. Yeah. Um. Late stage Andrew Bogut not on the Bucks, <laughs> but not nearly as good of a defender or passer. I mean, it's like if Mamu was a little taller and actually played center, maybe. I think it's disrespectful to Mamu. Yeah, I don't think – I think Mamu is a better shooting prospect. I think Mamu is just an overall better offensive player. It's it. Well, I get the Denzel Valentine thing with Filipowski where I'm like, okay, you can do this playmaking stuff. Are you ever going to have the ball enough to utilize that? Like that's the – like are, can your skills are, – are you either good enough to have the ball – or can you do stuff off ball that helps enough? And I just yeah. don't – I think the answers are both no for Filipowski. I should put Furphy above him. I don't like any of these guys. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Don, it's like uh, – I would be like, I get it. I Don, get I idea. see that like a big, massive dude, right? Like I see it. Yeah. I mean, the 7-1 wingspan, great defender. Just like I guess all the Dame, no Giannis minutes, just put him out there and make think, it work. I think we might be undervaluing undervaluing Ryan Dunn. But it's just like he doesn't do anything on the other end. Yeah, like can he figure out how to be a – if he could be a short roller, his value is way higher and maybe he can. Maybe that's Filipowski's role. Yeah. I don't know, man. I don't even know if I would say – like. I just have such a high bar for centers defensively. I know. I think that's what Brooke has ruined us. Yeah. But now now we're at a time where we need to like – Think about Brooke. Post being, Brooke. Yeah, post Brooke. Also, also something I didn't mention up top. Silver lining to the the Celtics winning the title. We well, might actually be done with Al Horford. Oh, you think he might retire? I hope so. He extended for another year, right? But it's like a small contract. Or was yeah. that this year? No, it's next year. I hope it's it, man. I hope so. You're 38 years old. Like, get out of here. <laughs> like. Now poor Mike Conley has to hang on and get it done before he reaches the Carl Malone level. You know what? The best the best NBA record is Carl Malone being the biggest loser in the league history. And you know what? Silver lining to Al Horford winning a title, which makes me want to throw up as I say it. Yeah. Is yeah. that now the John Stockton's back to two? Oh yeah. Yeah, because it went Malone, Horford, Stockton, and now Horford. Oh, won. do you just get pulled away? Like it's not it, it's like complete. Yeah, because you, he's he still a title. on there because he because he went that long without winning one. I think I think you get pulled off because it's oh, like yeah, most. I think, the, I think the list technically they pull is most games played without winning one. You're right; yeah. it's not most consecutive games before or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like I'm sure, like uh, Joe, uh, who's a who's a really old guy that was ring chasing with the Warriors. David West. David, David West won a title though with the Spurs, didn't he? Not the wait, no. Who am I thinking of? 
I don't know. He played on the Spurs too, but he was already washed by then. I think he didn't he start. Did he start with the Pacers or was he? He started with the first? Pacers. He was part of that photo shoot. Yeah, the infamous photo shoot. Uh, he started with the Hornets actually, uh, but he definitely didn't win one there. But he, I don't know if he played long enough. Yeah, I don't know. But the the list he being won one in year his thirty sixth season. He played a lot of games anyway. Played a lot of playoff games. Yeah, it's most playoff games without a without winning a title. Oh, okay. They may probably was on the. Um, but now, nah, now it's back to Malone and Stockton as they should be. Yeah, yeah, those guys suck. Um, so, sh- should okay, we just so, quickly run through our list again? Uh, well, let's do it. But let's do our tiers. So, what is your? However many players you want to include, who are the guys? And then I'll do mine, and we'll go back and forth. Who are the guys like the, on your list that you'd be most excited about the Milwaukee Bucks selecting at the twenty third overall pick? I have two guys here. It's Kelo, Ware, Tristan, De Silva. Nice. I have both of those and Keyshawn George in my top tier. And then my second tier. So that George De Silva wears one, two, three, and yours is where De Silva one, two. My second tier is Big Bobby Clintman, Jalen Tyson, Tyler Smith. So that's my four, five, six. Who what's your second tier look like? My second tier is four players in it. It's Bobby Clintman, Isaiah Collier, Keyshawn George, and Tyler Smith. Let's just include Collier in mine too to make it even. Like I would be, ex- I would be excited, but weirded out if they took him. And then I think I'd call these the players that, like, if they took him in the first round, I, I wouldn't be mad, but I wouldn't be thrilled. And I'd say that's Eves, Missy, Deron Holmes, and probably just them to be honest. For me, it's uh, Missy, Tyson, and I think that might be it. So is that I, 10 for both of us? So we have 10, 10 first round grades here? Wait, for, me, that that's, more for, for me, that's eight. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, because yeah. you had less in your first one. Okay. Yeah. So then uh, my, my next tier is uh, I hope they would be the second round pick. And that yeah. is uh, Baylor Shireman, uh, Holm, Daron Holmes, and Kevin McCullough Jr. And Tyler and Kolek. I'll put Kolek in there too. Uh, mine's bigger. So my – like I'd be happy with the – and obviously anyone in my top 10 – or top, top, nine. I had nine. Excuse me. Anyone in my top nine, if they got them with the first, the second round pick, I'd obviously be thrilled. But these are the guys where if they were the pick at 33, I'd be happy. Kevin McCullough Jr., Bacom Daddier, Baylor Shireman, Justin Edwards, Tyler Kolek, and I'll include Ryan Dunn. I'd be happy. I'd be the least happy out of that group probably – Maybe above Kolek, but I, I'd be like, okay, I, get, I see the vision. It's a second round pick. He has a clear NBA skill, a clear NBA frame. Even if there's obvious limitations, like there's still upside there. Yeah. And then the rest of my list is AJ Johnson, Kyle Filipowski, Johnny Furphy, Cam Christie, KJ Simpson. Mine is Justin Edwards, uh, Dadier Furphy, Don Filipowski, and AJ Johnson. God, I hope Filipowski goes in like the late teens. I don't know who would take him, though. Who knows? I just... Like, why? Like, wh- what team needs that? Like, is that an, is that position, like, that archetype, a team, like, a need for any team? Uh, I, that's what I said. I'm, like, trying to draw a current like, maybe Miami is so hard. Miami's the most interesting. I, I hope Devin Carter doesn't go there. Because, actually, the more I read about him, the more I like him, even though I didn't love him at first. I just think, like... I say Miami because that'd be so funny if they took Kyle Filipowski. That'd be they, hilarious. They can turn anyone into a defensive monster. Didn't didn't we make these jokes already with the Jovic thing that I said? We did, yeah. Dorky white guys, yeah, yeah. Sorry, we did. both we of them about, equally. We yeah. talked about this already, didn't we? We do. We've been doing a lot of draft prep. <laughs> well, we don't have much more time. What, yeah. Next Thursday. Next Thursday, indeed. round one. We have to wait for the round two to see both picks. I hate that so much. I know. It's so um, stupid. Who's tuning in just for the second? Like, just do it in one day. Like, they're, here's here's my prediction. They immediately revert back next year because the ratings are going to be abysmal. Yeah. Is it, is it, is it Thursday, Friday? Do they move up day one to Thursday? I think it's, I think it's Thursday, Friday. That's horrible. Like, um, so I, I have to sit here on a Friday night and do second round. Or is it Wednesday, go, Thursday? We're, we're going to go live right after 33 if they – and we haven't formalized our job, but I think I think instead of a full – I don't know. I, what do you want to do? I guess we could do both like Numak did and Jordan. Like do we want to be live for the draft and then just record when it's the Bucks part? You know what I mean? Yeah, we could do that. We'll figure it out. If you're interested, let us know. Yeah, if you have a – if you have a th- and I'm going to share my uh, 
like with all the info and stuff. I'm, I don't know if this is compiled all this stuff anywhere this cleanly. So I'm going to share this at the uh, at gspn.info at our Substack for premium Ooh. members. If you want yeah. access to my board, and we can share Rohan's too. Yeah, all uh, of our. Uh... It is. Oh, it's Wednesday, Thursday. It's Wednesday, it's Thursday. Wednesday, Thank Thursday. God. Thank okay. God. Yeah. So a week from tomorrow, Wednesday, June 26th, round one, Thursday, June 27th, round two. So maybe we do a final, a final mock, our most informed mock to start next week and then draft coverage. Yeah. And then we have to start a free agency. Yeah. Which is like also that weekend. Yeah. Maybe we, I mean, we'll see what we do on Monday. We'll have a lot to cover. We'll have two pods to do, I guess. Maybe three. Who we'll, knows? We'll, we'll have figure like it 10. out. We'll yeah, have it's going to be a busy week. We we'll will. We'll be all over. Especially Every time both, the Bucks. We're also both traveling. So. I'm not traveling. Oh, I thought you were. No. Oh. Whoops. <laughs> oh, is that for, is that Fourth of July weekend or is that before? It's before. No, then that should be good. Oh. Oh, okay. I'll be posted. I'm going to be here like DJ academics during the Kendrick Drake thing. Just not moving from the chair. Just night after night, more stuff. I'm, I'm still here. I'm still live. He's, rumor has it he's still live waiting for the next Drake release. And I am disgusted and will never compare myself to that piece of trash again. Yeah, I was going to say, what are you doing? Like, I know. Why do you want to compare yourself to academics? Like, it's just because I was like, who who just sits in a dark room all day? You could you could name like any over. streamer. That's not that's academics. Yeah. You could have said you're, you're Kai or something. Yeah. I started a riot. <laughs> Accidentally. Have, yeah, you could have said like you're Allegedly. Speed. No, I do not him. <laughs> I think that's worse. I'll be Ludwig. I don't think I don't think speed's worse than academics. Oh, I, I, I meant then Kai. Oh, okay. Anyway, that's enough streamer yeah, talk. Yeah, that's, I, that's, I think, we're, I think we're, we're out of our depth here. here. We've, we've got our players. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, look out for that stuff on the GSPN uh, Premium uh, at gspn.info, which, by the way, you could be listening to this podcast ad-free. You could be getting our exclusive podcast, GSPN After Dark. You could be getting exclusive videos. You could be having access to all of our written content. And all it is is one subscription. You find it at gspn.info. You can subscribe right there. But yeah, wherever you're listening to this, watching this YouTube podcast platform of choice, make sure you subscribe. Check out the aforementioned gspn.info, not only for the premium sub, but also for all of our links. Everything you can find, it's all at gspn.info, our new hub for uh, all things uh, GSPN. Uh, yeah, make sure you leave a five-star rating and review on your podcast platform of choice. Uh, pod random, and we'll talk to you next time.